we talk about this a lot on our brainstorming sessions and uh, you know the market the equity markets mosey along like you know nothing much is going to change it's same old same old and uh, and we're trying to figure out you know oh my gosh these these technologies are falling so dramatically in costs whether industrial robots energy storage AI uh, blockchain technology, multi-omic sequencing, they're, they're all, uh, the costs of all of them are, are hitting such low levels that they're going to scale, I think, much more dramatically than, than most people think. And uh, I think it's going to be very exciting if you're on the right side of change. It's going to be very <laughs> disturbing if you're not on the right side of change. And uh, I don't think, and, and this is where I think you've got it right, Peter, I don't think people understand how quickly this is going to happen. In this recent interview on Peter H. Diamond with Kathy Wood, we learn about the next 10 years with progress in technology, such as AI and cryptocurrencies. At the time of this discussion, Bitcoin is trading at $58,000, with a 2% increase change in the last 24 hours and 6% decrease change in the last seven days. Kathy Wood, the founder and CEO of ARK Invest, shares her insights on the transformative potential of emerging technologies. She emphasizes the importance of being on the right side of change, particularly in areas like artificial intelligence and blockchain. Wood discusses how these technologies are rapidly advancing and may be progressing faster than many people realize. She highlights the potential for AI and blockchain to revolutionize various industries and create new opportunities for innovation and growth. Before we dive into this discussion, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel. Now let's hear more from Kathy Wood. Can I just say, uh, what it highlight, what it showcases is, yes, the speed at which we expect these technologies to evolve because costs have come down to such a, a, a low level. And it also highlights how we've set up our organization um, our analyst responsibilities are broken out not by sector, not by industry, not by sub-industry, because technology is blurring the lines between and among industries, and these technologies are converging. So it's going to seem, you know, to the traditional analysts, it's going to seem like a chaotic world. Um, and, and we did have, and I know we talk about Tesla a lot, but it is the poster child and, and you get a sense of what's going to happen here. It's a robot company. It's an energy storage company. It's an AI company. It's an yeah, we've been watching Apple for a long time um, from, from a particular AI angle. We, we believe that autonomous vehicles are the ultimate mobile devices. And so rightly, China, uh, Apple should have... Um, gone for it. And yet we saw one ter management turnover after another, after another, and now they're pretty much abandoning it. And so that was our first clue that, you know, AI was a tough nut for Apple to crack. Um, and, and so, yeah, it was very interesting to hear various responses uh, around and, and, and a big debate around what this means uh, for Apple. Um, it's not bad, of course, uh, um, but you, we within our own organization have two points of view. Uh, one of them is, this is great for Apple. You know, they're going to be able to layer in all of these features, functionality. They already know so much uh, about their users. And, uh, and, and one of my friends said, you know, I almost felt relieved when I, when I heard the, the, the features they were going to roll out. I felt safe. They were going to keep me safe in this world, which, you know, so I found that very interesting. And so, of course, Nick Gruss, our uh, Apple analyst, um, was very excited. He, he thinks this is, um, this is going to be fantastic. One thing it will do is the refresh cycle uh, this next one will probably be a good one uh, uh, because there's something new, new. Okay, so that's that. Yeah. On the other side, it's not side, just a better camera, <laughs> right? On the other side of yeah. the debate is, uh, and I'm I lean a little bit here, uh, is our chief futurist, whom you know, Brett Winton, is saying, well, wait a minute, Apple's Apple is known for privacy and security. 
And sure, it's going to roll out these these features, which sounded kind of meh, you know, uh, during the launch. Uh, sure, they're going to roll them out, and it's going to make uh, you know these Apple phones somewhat more interesting. But there is so much happening when it comes to AI, and there are going to be companies who are not constricted by this. Uh, you can say constricted or confined or whatever by this privacy, uh, security kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, priority who will come up with some crazy new ideas that are going to become very attractive to people. Uh, but Apple will not be able to adopt them in the same way. So this, this has set up for us, and this is part of the mag seven or mag six versus rest of disruptive innovation. You know, is it those companies? Is it their, theirs to lose here? And, you know, the history of disruptive innovation is, yes, it is theirs to lose. We just don't know who's going to come up with what provocative product to dislodge them. And that, that was kind of a risk for Apple as well. You know, the apps, um, you know, we maybe we don't have to use these apps. Maybe the developers won't have to pay that tax. Uh, you know, as uh, as with uh, ChatGPT and and others, we can just go where we want, ask you know, and get exactly what we want. Now that's an oversimplification, and I think it has been uh, confirmed uh, that Google paid. Uh, Apple $20 billion uh, to be the default search, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, and, and so, uh, yes, the whole world is being, um, uh, I, think, I think the traditional world is, is uh, going to be shaken up in a way that I think people don't quite understand yet. As we just heard Kathy Wood discuss the importance of AI and its rapid evolution, she highlights the significant partnership between OpenAI and Apple emphasizing how this collaboration could accelerate AI development and integration across various platforms. Wood then transitions to discussing blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies. She explains how Bitcoin, as a decentralized digital currency, is poised to revolutionize the financial sector. Wood emphasizes that blockchain technology enables secure, transparent transactions, which could transform not only finance, but various other industries. She stresses the importance of understanding and embracing these technologies to remain competitive in the rapidly evolving digital landscape. Now let's listen to what Kathy Wood has to say about the future of cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. I think, uh, so we have four people at ARC who are working on uh, crypto generally, one dedicated to Bitcoin on-chain analytics. And judging by those, uh, we are we believe, halfway through this bull market. And, and halfway doesn't mean uh, we're halfway through the price increase because, you know, at the end of a bull market, uh, prices tend to go parabolic. So we have no idea where, where that, but we feel very strongly just based on on-chain analytics, looking at them uh, versus the, the short 10-year history, 10, a little bit more than that history, uh, that we're halfway through the bull market. What's very interesting uh, since the ETFs were launched in January, many people think, "Oh, uh, all right, the the boom and and you know we we had um, we've had a very nice showing, David versus Goliath. We're 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 in mm -hmm. we're in the fight, and very congratulations happy <laughs> where we are. Yeah, um, but not one major." Uh, uh, what we call them wirehouses, like Morgan Stanley, UBS, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Mel Merrill Lynch. Not one has put Bitcoin on its platform yet, a Bitcoin ETF. They're all doing their due diligence. And I think what's going to happen is uh, within the next few months, one will, and it may be not the big ones, it may be uh, an independent RIA like um, LPL, they tend to move a little more quickly. Uh, once you get one with a, a, a spot Bitcoin ETF on its platform, the others will fall in line pretty good. But you can go to an online online broker, uh, Robinhood and others, and uh, 
and they, they tend to be a little bit more um, a little bit more adventurous. Yes, 2030. So uh, our our bull uh, case bull is uh, over 1.5 million. Our base is in the $650,000 range, so about tenfold from here by, by 2030. Uh, and there are three big building blocks. Uh, institutional is one, and, and I would put the, the, it sounds like retail distribution, but these are institutional decision makers at B of A, Merrill Lynch, and so forth. Uh, so that's one. Uh, the second is, this is a replacement for gold. So we assume that it's going to subsume 50% of the, the gold, uh, what would be the gold market, especially as younger people are looking to diversify. And then uh, it is an insurance policy. Uh, in emerging markets, uh, uh, you know, I, I just visited El Salvador and had the pleasure of meeting you know, the top officials there and they are blazing a trail, making it legal, t legal tender uh, and, you know, giving their populations or showing the way for other countries to give their. It's so interesting how surreptitiously uh, Bitcoin really is uh, got into the hands of 50 to 60 million Americans and uh, has become an election year issue. In fact, for many, voters, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, for many voters, it is the election issue. And that is why for um, the Financial Innovation Technology Act of the 21st century, so FIT 21, I uh, was able to attract 76 Democrats. I think, I think when, um, uh, uh, when uh, the, the Republicans basically turned this into uh, an election year issue, whether accept, accepting campaign, uh, donations in crypto or or saying that they would um, protect the right for self custody that's a big one that's a very big one for for Bitcoin and we're we're very much uh, uh, aligned even though we have an uh, ETF and that could be a centralization vector we think uh, both both are true self custody for you know the early adopters and those who learn more about the ecosystem but then just getting people into understanding what this is how powerful this movement is that is the role of a spot bitcoin etf because once you own a spot bitcoin etf you want to learn even more about it yeah, yeah we tend not to do one year but if we're in the middle of uh, the bull market i think the next spur is going to be uh, the, uh, the 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 platforms uh, putting the spot Bitcoin ETF on it. So, uh, and I do think that will happen this year. We were told by some of our <clears throat> our um, prospective clients, uh, the platforms themselves, that they would need six to nine months to evaluate it. So here we are, entering the six month. Uh, so I would expect in the fall, one or more will put uh, its uh, put the a spot uh, Bitcoin ETF or many of them on on their platforms, and uh, I think that will be the next wish. Then, yeah. you know, it's interesting. Well, I, I remember in the yeah. last, I think it was the last having. Many people, you know, we went through the having, and uh, everybody waited for a pop. And it didn't happen. Well, first of all, it didn't happen because there's a lot of anticipatory buying into it. But uh, I've I've watched it kind of, you know, uh, gestate, shall we say, and uh, and then all of a sudden. So those two could coincide in the fourth quarter of this year. It could be pretty exciting. As we conclude this insightful discussion with Kathy Wood, let's reflect on some thought-provoking questions. How might the widespread adoption of cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology reshape the global financial system in the next decade. What steps can individuals and businesses take to prepare for and adapt to the rapid changes in the crypto space discussed by Kathy Wood? Thank you for tuning in to Only the Savvy. If you enjoyed this discussion, please subscribe, like, and share our video for more engaging content diving into the innovative world of decentralized technologies. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and questions in the comments section below.